good morning my friends it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and right now what you're looking at is my very first seven inch record that I made it was the very first music that I recorded when I moved to Los Angeles and today I'm gonna tell you how this seven inch record connects to Peter Sellers days with Jordan the Lion begins now Slug bug, look at that relic. And there's the people walker jaw. There's Charlie. <laughs> Slug bug again. Wow, now that is cool. Well, when I first moved to Hollywood, I had dreams of grandeur and I went to music school and really wanted to be in a performing indie band that just toured the country, made records, and that was about it. I wanted to make at least one record a year and um, just life changes. And uh, at that time, I was going to music school and uh, I was selling an amplifier and my friend Michael, who you guys have all met now, saw my ad at school for that amplifier and said, I wanna come over and check it out. When he came over and checked it out, he, uh, he noticed that I had a four track recorder sitting out on my table and said, are you a songwriter or are you a recording guy? And I said, no, I'm a songwriter. He said, play me something. So I grabbed an acoustic guitar and I played him a song that we would later record on this record. Um, and the song was called Queen of the Writing Scene. I played it on acoustic guitar and he goes, wow. He goes, I mean, I wanna play, basically he goes, what I wanna do is I wanna record people but I want to be in like a band that I record as well. So he said, if you ever want to record, I'll record you because I really want to get like good at recording people. And all I will charge you is a frozen pizza every time we record. And so that became our deal. I was a good songwriter at the time, or at least competent. Um, people that would hear my song seemed to like them, but I had no knowledge of any kind of technology or how to operate a real recording console. So Michael became that guy. We recorded our very first EP, this seven inch EP, in his apartment, in his bedroom. I played pretty much most of the guitars. Michael played some guitar. I played the bass, and then we got some of his Swedish friends to play drums that we recorded at our music school. And now I'm gonna show you Michael's first apartment in Hollywood where we recorded and where our band officially first started. So from about the year 2000 to about the year 2002, Michael, our friend Paul, our friend Will, our friend Pontus, Hans, they all lived in this apartment. Michael and Paul were the first ones to live here. And then when Paul left, he moved other guys in. It just became like a musician's apartment. And since Michael was good at fixing things, he'd been in the military, he worked up a deal with the landlord that he would do repairs for the guy. Um, they would, the guy would give him a little bit of a discount. So every day for about three or four months, I would be here at this building in Michael's apartment recording music. We spent, I mean, literally every single day. We were both really dedicated to this because we really didn't know what life was gonna have in store other than we had the dream to play music. And when our schooling ended, pretty much everybody we knew eventually over the next two years would move out of Hollywood, give up on their dream, go back to where they came from. And Michael and I were the only two that stayed. Michael enrolled in school at Santa Monica College for a short time and then went on to, um, I forget where he went. I think he went to uh, Cal State Northridge and became an accountant. And through that whole time, our band continued to go. Now, since we were just a two-man band, we formed basically as a singer-songwriter band and we wanted to expand it into something like Guided by Voices or The Flaming Lips or Build to Spill, something like that. So we needed musicians, and I was working at a record label that I've already taken you guys to. Um, if you want to find out about it, go look up um, TTG Studios under my vlogs or Two Terrible Guys, and you'll find it. Anyway, um, we needed musicians, so I placed an ad, found John, John Juan, he became our bass player, and then we needed a drummer. And my direct boss at the time was the head of production named Neil. And Neil had been in great, uh, he had been a great drummer throughout his life and hadn't played in 10 years. 
but he liked my personality, liked the music, and went out and bought a drum set and became our drummer. Now Neil, when we first started hanging out, turned me onto the movie Ghost World, which I've already vlogged. Go look up my Ghost World vlog. And um, I got really into the opening song of that movie called John Pei Chanho, and he goes, you know what you would probably like? You might get into Bollywood from this. He goes, go look up a Peter Sellers movie called The Party. I went out and bought The Party and I became obsessed. Now, get this. The very final scene of The Party, starring Peter Sellers, actually takes place right here, across the street, right there. Now let me tell you that story. We actually see Peter Sellers and his date leaving the party in the morning, driving down this street. And pulling up right here at this building, this apartment. Now you can actually see right here where this car is parked is where his blue car or her blue car that well it's actually his car that she drives is parked right here in the way that I could match it up was because if you look underneath the car you can see where those two circular um, spout drain spots once were. There's actually one right here and one right there. I'll match that up with the movie. Now, we actually see the scene take place here, but let me tell you a little bit about the movie because the movie is pretty interesting because this was actually a movie that, I mean, you know it's gonna be good because Blake Edwards is involved and anything Blake Edwards did, I feel like is just a hit and a home run. Now, this was a movie that was intended to be a silent movie. Um, it was going to be in color to kind of modernize it, but this was Peter Sellers and Blake Edwards getting together to try and make a silent movie homage to the movies that they grew up loving. And um, they filmed about a day of it and then realized that Peter Sellers just said, like, I can't do it that way. We're going to have to, we're going to have to write a script. And he said that, um, you know, most scripts when you go into production are like about 110, 120 pages long. This one was actually only 67 pages. So a bulk of the movie was actually all improvised, which just makes it even cooler. Um, they got the, basically the same crew that worked on the Pink Panther movies and they knew it was gonna be good because see Peter Sellers thing was that he was a master at basically doing caricatures of people or doing um, impersonations of people. He was good at playing anybody else other than himself. And so this was gonna be, you know, if you've, you may have seen the movie or you might have seen the famous scenes of like the Birdie Nom Nom and it's basically him playing an Indian guy who goes to a ritzy party and just everything he touches, he destroys or causes some sort of catastrophe and basically ruins the party. He's almost like the, an earlier version of Frank Drebin. So when they park here, you actually see them walk up to here. And even though this fountain isn't as tall as it was in the movie. I would ask you to come up, but uh, it's a little late. That's where the fountain was, and you actually see them standing right here, and you can see this section right behind them, and it's when she's trying to give him back the cowboy hat. Oh, look, um, you keep it. And he says, well, you should keep the cowboy hat. And she says, yeah, but you might want the cowboy hat. And he says, but I might want you to have it. And she says, okay, well, if you ever want it back, you can, I mean, you know where I am and you can come get it. But you, you may need it. No, I'd like you to keep it. I, if you think that you should want it or need it sometimes. Well, I can. And he goes, okay, so when I want it, I'll come back. Will it be okay for me to come back this week? You know, he's basically asking her on a date or when would it be good for me to come back and get my hat? <laughs> and she starts laughing and says, um, next week would be okay. When would you be 
available for me to pick up my hat. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe next week. Well, I'll come and get it then. Okay. And so he ends up departing and hopping in his car that's parked right here. And the movie was like actually a really well received movie and it's a really funny movie because like I said, it's so much of it's improvised. They didn't know that it was gonna not have dialogue so they just turned him loose and they said a lot of those scenes like the birdie nom nom, they were all just things that he thought up right there on the spot. And so this is the kind of stuff that I love vlogging for because right there is Michael's apartment our first drummer who is still one of our best friends and Michael and I are gonna go um, visit him probably before the end of next year. So you'll get to meet Neil. Um, we're, we've been talking about it. It's funny how you can connect like this was a very strong foundation in my start in Hollywood, this building right here. And then something that Neil would turn me on to would literally be filmed right here. And you can tell from the clips that I posted that they've changed the front quite a bit. You know, it's the, the numbering on there is not in the same place where it once was, but... It's kind of nice to see that they kept the fountain area or even that the building still exists. And just to think, literally right here, right this section right here is where they would have been standing having that conversation. Now I'm gonna keep my eye out for the house that they show in the movie that they, like where he arrives and where they depart from, but they actually didn't film that um, in there. They planned to, but once they started filming, they realized it just like, or once they started looking at it, they said logistically it just wasn't gonna work. So they actually did film that all on a sound stage um, at MGM. And that scene with the pool and all the bubbles and stuff, they said that that was almost, that almost killed some people because they, um, in those days, the only way you could get all that fizz and all the like bubbling and everything, they said that they had to hire like the um, the crew from LAX, like the airport, that comes and sprays down that foam. And they said that it actually produced so much foam that um, the actors that were in the pool were couldn't breathe. And um, as a joke, some guys like go, "Hey, we're gonna throw the producer in the pool," and they went and threw the producer in the pool. And the guy wasn't that great of a swimmer and almost like drowned. They said he or he tells the story of saying literally like I was trying my fi find my way across the pool and just as I'm losing consciousness my hands touched the side of the wall and somebody pulled me out but um said it was almost fatal filming that movie but it's a great movie if you've never seen it go check it out Peter Sellers playing a um a an original East Indian and um people have always said like they said he's like a a uh, an icon in India because he was so accurate his portrayal of playing Indian Birdie nom nom. Birdie nom nom, birdie nom nom. Gotta love history in your life. It's funny the way things pull together sometimes. You can just tie in the weirdest things to create a vlog when you live in this town. And then of course when he drives away, he's driving down this street. Actually, a lot of the story if you want to know more about how like Michael and I met or where it was that we met um, the apartment that I lived in my very first apartment and where we met and all that happened the amplifier and all that just go look up my old vlog um, 17 years ago today this is a weird vlog because now I've given you three homework assignments three different vlogs you can go back and check out to uh, find out more about this vlog so if you want to find out more there it is and a little shameless plug if you want one of the Last remaining copies of this limited edition uh, EP, send me an email at dayswithjordanthelion at gmail.com and I'll tell you how you can get one. And when we see Peter Sellers drive down this street, you actually see this building was still there in the background. 